Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about Dash Core components. In the previous tutorials, we explored the HTML components. We saw how to give actions to our elements with the callbacks. And now it's time to go one step further and make our dashboards really cool with the Dash Core components. So let's start by creating a, an empty file and let's call it dash intro. .py and let's import dash let's take dash core components as tcc and let's import dash html components as html so as always we need to go through three different steps to have our dashboard. The first one is to initialize it. So let's give to the variable dash, the dash dot dash and capitalize the second D. We have to give like a layout. So for now, we're just going to have like an empty div and inside our empty div, let's just pass like a list. And here we are going to have our core components. But before that, let's just run the server. So dash dot run server. And let's pass the flag debug equals to true. This is a very useful tool to see where the errors are. And if everything is fine, we can just run Python dash dot intro. And we have like an empty dashboard. So it's in this window. Now that we have that, let's write our core components. So the first one will be a drop down. So drop down here. The second one, it will be some radio items. And the final component will be a graph. We're going to plot stuff out. So let's start by the drop down. So we have to take the drop down from the DCC. So let's just write drop down now. And inside our drop down, we have to give it an ID. And it's going to be my drop down or. And we have to pass the argument options. And here in our argument options, we are going to say to our drop down what items we would like to have inside. Okay. And this drop down is expecting like a list on the options argument. And inside that list, it's expecting some dictionaries. Okay. So let's start by passing the list. And inside our list, let's pass our first dictionary. And each dictionary is also expected to have like a label key and a value key. So we can just say label here and say what, what is the name of our label. So we're going to write, you know, some countries as items. So let's start by France and let's give it a value of France as well. And this value is extremely important because later on, when you'll be using the callbacks, you'll access this value and you're going to rely on that to take some actions or modify other elements. So the first one is France. We can just whoops, copy this out and give it like some other countries. Let's say uh, England give it the same value and the last one is going to be Portugal and give it the same value. So now if we start our dashboard and if we look into our, again, it's in the wrong window, but if we look into our dashboard, we can see that now we have this nice drop down and inside our drop down, we have all the options that we wrote in the code, France, England, and Portugal. Pretty cool. So you can also 
set the multi equals to true. This will allow you to select multiple items. So again, if you look into the dashboard, you will see that now we can select more than one item. So France, Portugal. Okay, so let's close it. And let's move to the next one. There's also like an option to set a placeholder. So before you select an element, you may say to the user that uh, pick your favorite country. And if you go into the dashboard, now you can see that we have a nice message saying, pick your favorite country. Pretty cool. So let's move on. And now let's take a look on the radio items. The radio items are actually working pretty similar as the dropdown, but instead of accessing the dropdown, we are going to access the radio items. And from here on, it's basically the same. So we can pass like an ID, and our ID can be radio. And we have to pass, pass the options. And here, this is exactly the same. So it's expecting a list and inside a dictionary with the exact same keys. So I'm just going to copy it. Let's just take this out. And here we go. So exactly the same. If we actually run our dashboard again, and we are probably missing a comma here, so these are different elements. Don't forget that we are inside a list and we have to separate the elements with commas, as always. So let's run our dashboard. And again, wrong window. And now we can see that we have these nice radio items. Every time that you click in, you are activating the value France. So again, if you had some callbacks, you could just click like in France and it could render like a map of France or something like that, or England or Portugal. So, and finally, let's take a look in a graph. So this is actually, in my opinion, the most powerful tool in Dash because we can use the inbuilt Plotly um, graphs and we can just like uh, render them in our dashboard. So let me actually show you what I mean by that. So let's go out and let's take one more import. So let's import plotly.express as px. You probably, if you install dash, you probably already have uh, plotly installed. So no need for imports. But the way that dash uses plotly, and again, dash is made by the Plotly team, so everything is extremely interconnected, is that you can just come here, pass a dcc.graph, and here you can just say that the figure is equal to a Plotly graph. So we can just come out of the layout, and we can say that our figure is just px.line, and this is just going to plot a normal line. We can define some X values, 0, 1, 2, and some Y values to have uh, a line plotted, 2, 3, 4, something like that. And we can just take like this plotly graph and use it in our dashboard. So again, if we go to our uh, we are also missing a comma once again. So let's go back. Okay, so it seems that Plotly Express requires Pandas to be installed. So let's just install it, pip install Pandas. This is also like a very standard library and it should take just one minute to install. And after the installation is completed, let's just run our server again. Now we can see that our dashboard 
as a nice graph. And the cool thing is that you have all the tools that you usually have with Plotly already in built in the dashboard. So you can zoom in, you can, you know, play with the lines. There's a lot of things that you can do. You can even save the, the graph by default. You can, you know, move in several directions. There's actually one of the most cool features on Dash. So you can use Plotly graphs in any way, any type of Plotly Dash, uh, Plotly graphs, not only the Express, like you can use the Plotly Go, and you can just render them like a Dash Core component graph. So that's everything for today's tutorial. Hopefully you like it. If you have any questions, just leave it in the comments. Thank you for watching.